Opening exposition covered by rapid fire edited sequence of news broadcast cliche. I remember in 2013 a meteor hitting Russia. I also remember this very clip of it on YouTube, but movie says f it, this meteor hit Germany. These pictures are just in from Verdun. The movie picks a classic World War I battle site for the alien invasion here, because even aliens know how important Verdun is when it comes to conquering Europe. The Angel of Verdun. They're calling her the Angel of Verdun. Emily Blunt isn't the angel of my pants in this movie. Rita Vertasky was able to kill hundreds of mimics. The movie steals its main villain name from horrible 1997 movie with the same name. Operation Downfall is going to be the largest mechanized invasion in the history of mankind. And we're so confident we're broadcasting the details about it for all humans and aliens to see. Maybe for a real soldier who's been on the front lines, it's possible to sleep in a janky-ass helicopter like this, but for a cushy PR guy that is basically a model-slash-actor? No, he's not sleeping. He's vomiting and probably bitching about the bumpy ride. Look, no one loves this movie more than me, but any alien race that would attack Earth with only the capabilities to fight a lengthy, sustained land war is a f***ing stupid alien race. Like, dumber than those assholes in science. General, I am an officer in the United States military. You don't even have the authority. I have spoken to your CO. Okay, I'll just believe that without a phone call. I wonder why my own CO didn't tell me about this. What a sandbag job. How hard do you think it would be for me to convince people to blame you? Casual blackmail. We will see Cage wake up here many times throughout this movie's Groundhog Day-like narrative. But why is he allowed to sleep here? Why does no one put him in a jail cell or a room until he regains consciousness? Anything goes in this military, I guess. Also, the general said this was a PR thing with a camera crew and sh I didn't ask you her to sell me, I want you to sell the invasion. You ship out to the coast in one hour, your camera crew is standing by. But then after Cruz tries to blackmail him, the general busts his rank down, has him tased, handcuffed, and still sends him to the front lines? Without a camera crew? So this went from a PR thing about selling the war effort to some kind of twisted punishment that is certainly not military appropriate even if England and America have joined forces. On your feet, maggots! How does no one recognize the one asshole who's been on TV on practically every channel as this war's media strategist? This whole FOB's on lockdown, no calls. In or out. This is the equivalent of kids not being able to get cell phone reception in a backwoods horror movie. It's actually kind of a silly convenience for the plot, but I'll just go ahead and send it for the fact that Cage didn't bother to make a phone call to his CO earlier, deciding blackmail was his best course of action. Says here you're a deserter. And what we do with deserters who have no talent outside of advertising is we put them on the front lines with heavy gun suits and just laugh while they f*** everything up and the aliens win. Because this is apparently the Men of the Night's Watch from Game of Thrones. Ass. I could hurt somebody. <laughs> That's correct. Bloody hell. It's the full metal. Even though Rita is a revered soldier who has kicked all sorts of alien ass and known as a bitch, there's still some dumbass brave enough to talk sh right in front of her. Also, it's pretty amazing that after a woman beat all the alien ass, inspiring millions of people, especially women, the military is still 99% dudes in this movie. Cage actually tries this. Activate drop lines! Remember! Sergeant Farrell survives this. Why doesn't everyone in this army have one of these amazing slaughter paddles? What the hell is she doing? The fiery crucible in which the only true heroes are forged. One place where all men truly share the same rank. Farrell starts this line outside, but then waits 20 seconds until they're inside to finish it. Despite everything repeating itself almost exactly, Cage still waits forever to drop during the second time through the ship explosion. Maybe the exosuits can absorb some or even most of the impact of a fall like this? Maybe. But even still, he's gonna get a concussion from this kind of bullshit, at the very least, right? His body is coming to a jarring stop after moving super fast, so his brain and heart and spleen and shit is gonna be rattling around to the degree a normal person would puke and then die, right? Yes, I have been there! It. You're all doomed! You're doomed! Cage is a direct descendant of Crazy Ralph from Friday the 13th. Cage clearly demonstrates he has knowledge of the future, but they ignore it and just tape his mouth shut, because movie needs to be longer than 30 minutes. Movie that conveniently skipped over the eight or so hours at night before launch every previous time through this history will now take advantage of that time for plot advancement. Nobody who militaries for a living notices this shit. Also, hell, he's running alongside the truck in full view of everyone behind him and to the side off camera. How is this possibly safe? You're telling me there are never any bullets ricocheting back into these wide open firing windows, killing these workers standing here not doing shit? Sexy push-up for no reason is a sin, but also sexy enough to take off a sin. So, move along. Nothing to see here. No one understands mimic biology better than him. Wow. Good thing he's on the same base as you guys, am I right? I sincerely doubt the effectiveness of hologram presentations, but futuristic movies keep telling me they're going to be a thing, even though they are objectively worse at relaying information than any presentation software that we currently use. But this is the brain. It controls them all. Here's the aliens are all controlled by one source cliche. It's always simple when it comes to defeating aliens, isn't it? And the Omega has the ability to control time. Whenever an Alpha is killed, an automatic response is triggered. The Omega starts the day over again. But they were winning the war. Is this basically saying that the Omega will start the day over again no matter what's happening on the battlefield? 
They're killing millions of people in an ambush, and they lose one alpha, and it's like, whoops, gotta start this shit over again. But if that's true, how did you win if you're done? We were allowed to win. Yeah, after a thousand tries, apparently. If the alien plan was to allow you to win at Verdun, why did it take you that many tries to actually win? Also, did it purposely infect you with its blood to do this? Or was it purely by accident? Because the alien plan entirely relies on your ability to adapt. Otherwise, you were gonna lose, and this whole plan goes up in smoke. This thing wants us to believe we can win. It wants us to throw everything we have into the invasion. Did they just get impatient? It seems like the aliens had pretty good control over the war and nothing was gonna stop them, but they needed a speedy victory, I guess, because they have to answer to alien congress or something. Also, look, I'm all for the convenience that Cage killed the one in 6.18 million alpha alien that allows him to control time, but this ridiculous let them win one battle strategy offers the convenience that one other person just happened to be infected by the alpha and is able to train Cage right now, when he would have otherwise been unable to help himself. The thing you've got to understand is this is a perfectly evolved, world-conquering organism. That's taken years and still only basically has control of Europe. Its only vulnerability is humanity. So, allergic to Earth, basically? Skinny, you dumbass, he's right next to you. You're telling me you don't know where that slipper son of a bitch went? Sergeant Farrell would be excellent at cinema sins. Oh, you mean sex? Yeah, tried it. Do or do not, hot soldier girl. There is no try. I think I'm okay. <sighs> On your feet, maggot. 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 I'm trying to be nice to you, maggot. God, I love this. This is another reason why this movie is so fun. I'm taking off a couple sins here. I'm not made of stone. Movie that already stated that the Omega is looking for Tom Cruise and he'll start getting the visions when the Omega is getting close to figuring out who and where he is, decides to forget all that and give him another hundred lives without the Omega getting any closer to finding him. If I go something on my face? Maybe the movie is saying that Cage is tired of seeing Rita die over and over and that's why we're in the training simulation today, but Rita did say that training was over earlier. It's a Tom Cruise movie, so here's that riding a motorcycle scene you were all clamoring for. You can do this. You can. You keep coming here every day and I'll train you. He must have figured out how to get into the training facility by himself without anyone knowing. How did he do this? I don't know. I guess that'll have to remain a mystery. Literally on a prime-ass piece of coastal French real estate, there is somehow a f***ing trailer park, complete with bombed-out amusement park attractions. Because reasons. He specifically reminded her to disconnect the trailer, but five seconds later she forgot, because hilariousness. If you are in a vehicle, please lock doors and stay inside. Coincid irony. Only vehicle they really had as an option just happens to be low on gas cliché. It must be deja vu. Or Emily Blunt can actually time travel, because she goes to the exact same house in which she was staying in Looper. Hey! <laughs> Three. Like three. Movie rips off the guy manipulating the reliving of one day to gain insight into a woman ends up creeping out said woman by knowing too much about them thing from Groundhog Day. It's as far as you go. No matter what I do, it's as far as you ever make it. He seriously hasn't thought of a way to keep her from going to the helicopter after all these times? can he just lead with that up front at the beginning of the day and say, you constantly f this up by wanting to get in the helicopter, so put that out of your mind, okay? Even if he has done that, it's unbelievable she always goes for the helicopter. Yeah, no, he's dead. Day reset. What is the Alpha waiting for? I realize they understand they can't kill him, but do something. What the hell is this thing? Great for escaping and convenient dying. Built a prototype at Whitehall. Yes, and I got fired for it, thank you very much. Then how the f*** are you just hanging around at the main United Defense military base creating awesome computer simulations and sh**? It's a transponder. You stick it into the Alpha and it taps into the wavelength connecting it to the Omega. Wait, why wasn't he using this plan in the first place? Sounds like some magical ass shit. Damn. How many times did these two die needlessly before anyone even brought up this thing? This guy with the yellow armband always recognizes you, so just keep your head down and stay to my right. Why doesn't everyone recognize her? Her face is blastered all over the damn world. In fact, why do they have to sneak into any place? She's a freaking celebrity. I don't understand. It's the Louvre. Omega coincidentally takes up residence in an iconic landmark. Man, these mimics have an amazing knowledge of Earth's iconography. Listen, pal, I don't really care what you think you know about us. We just met you. That's correct, but despite this completely healthy skepticism, movie will still let this guy be talked into it. Why would we follow him into combat? I don't expect you to follow me. I expect you to follow her. Cage plays the pronoun game so that Rita can make this dramatic entrance. Also, Cage holds his trump card until the very end, because it's not like time is of the essence or anything. Even in the midst of an alien war, military aerial ships are allowed to be taken without notice or objection. Cage survives this. A minute ago we saw Sergeant Farrell giving his speech about giving 100%, which during several of Cage's lives meant they were about to get on the ship for the beach battle during early morning daylight hours. But here it's completely dark with no sign of daylight anytime soon. No mimics attack during the planning and execution of the clear the path idea. I'm not gonna be any good in there, mate. Let me buy you some time. Guy who was relatively okay sacrifices himself for the group for no real reason. When Cage could die, he died pretty much every time he expected him to. Now that he can't die, he survives like this. When Cage could die, he died pretty much every time we... You say I already said this? 
probably because the Alpha got killed and I don't remember seeing it from before. The Alpha has to know at this point that the humans can no longer reset the day, so the f is he waiting for? Movie rips off the reveals the grenade pins thing from Leon, aka the professional, but really Leon. So you're telling me he ended the war by killing the Omega, but still reset the day killing the Alpha as well so he could let the girl live and be her boyfriend? Man, I guess the power of boners really is stronger. Also, how did he kill the Omega and inherit the Alpha's ability to reset the day without also resetting the Omega being alive? He wakes up a day earlier and the news is talking about a mysterious explosion the night before this, which definitely does not compute since he and the gang raid the Louvre later tonight to cause that explosion. But whatever, he gets the girl, I think. Sexy push-up girl is always doing sexy push-ups. What do you want? Good for you, Doug Lyman. Bravo, sir. So let's strategize. Map! Our sources have told us that the Canadians are preparing for our invasion, so we must use Tarkin. Each battalion has a specific code name and mission. You... you... do what you do. Don't know how you do the voodoo that you do so well. No cuts, no butts, no coconuts. No! This is Papa Dragon. We can rebuild him. <laughs> We have the technology. Use the force, Luke. My middle name is Rose. You're so stupid, Rose. What have you done? What have you done? You got three pints of Kramer in you, buddy. Immediately regret this decision. This is the end. We've been through worse. Are you and Jack an effective team? The only thing I'd do differently if I were Tom Cruise's character in Edge of Tomorrow is I'd change up my nature box snack order every time I reset the day. That way I could eventually, through all the dying and waking back up and such, try every single nature box snack available. They have tons of snacks. How many? Seven. More than that. That's not actually a very high number. One million. Whoa, whoa, back it down there a bit, Chief. I have five. That's a computer key, not a number. It's over 9,000! We're getting much closer, that's for sure. I think we're maybe getting sidetracked. Okay, enough! Let's just say however many varieties of snacks you hope they have, they have more. Well then, this would be more, wouldn't it? Anyway, if you go to naturebox.com slash cinemasins, our friends at Naturebox will give you a free sampler box just for signing up. Free. As in less than costing something. No dollars, just snacks. That's impossible! So get thee to naturebox.com slash cinemasins and show your thanks to them for supporting our channel. It's a pretty huge sacrifice to ask you to accept free delicious snacks, but we're confident some of you will have the courage or the outright hunger to help us get it done. Get in my belly! Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna reset the day again. I'm thinking peanut butter and jelly granola this time. <laughs>